In this video, I'm talking about what separates good hearing care providers from great hearing care providers. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. We've all had the experience of going into a doctor's office, waiting there for a long time, only to have that doctor rush into your room, quickly review your chart, ask you a few simple questions, and give you a treatment recommendation without knowing anything about you other than your symptoms. Well, hopefully you've also had the opposite of that experience where you go into a doctor's office and they end up spending a significant amount of time with you getting to know who you are before they end up recommending a treatment plan. The first experience that I mentioned makes you end up feeling like you're just a number, someone who's gonna help that doctor meet their quota for the amount of patients that they have treated inside of that day. The second experience makes you feel like an actual person, like the doctor wants to get to know you so they can make the best treatment recommendation possible that is in your best interest. Is there any surprise that the second method actually leads to higher rates of treatment acceptance and better treatment outcomes? Well, it might surprise you, but these two vastly different experiences do not occur based on chance. They are very specific forms of care delivery models. The first one is the biomedical model. The second one is the bio psychosocial model, otherwise known as person-centered care or patient-centered care. Besides the obvious issue of poor bedside manner, which often occurs with the biomedical approach, this form of care delivery often leads to lower rates of treatment acceptance and worse treatment outcomes. The person-centered care approach, on the other hand, often results in a better experience with your provider, as well as higher rates of treatment acceptance and better treatment outcomes. So let's take a deeper look at these two care delivery models, see what makes them so different from each other, and why person-centered care often makes the difference between good and great when it comes to your hearing treatment. First, let's define the biomedical model. This is an approach where all of the focus is placed on biological factors, excluding psychological, environmental, and social influences. Basically, with a biomedical approach to hearing care, your hearing care provider is only interested in the results of your audiogram and will make all recommendations based on those test results alone. Second, let's define the biopsychosocial model, otherwise known as person-centered care or patient-centered care. This is a form of care delivery that is respectful of and responsive to individual patient preferences, needs, and values, and ensuring that patient values guide all clinical decisions. With a person-centered approach to hearing care, your hearing care provider is interested in your hearing test results, but they're also interested in your individual preferences, needs, and values when making treatment recommendations and ultimately administering that treatment. All right, now that you know the philosophical difference between these two types of care delivery, let's take a look and see exactly what makes them so different from each other. According to the Ida Institute, in the biomedical model, hearing loss is viewed only as a biological or medical issue. Issue. That is an isolated disease for which we are looking for a cure or a fix. There is a heavy focus on identifying the diagnosis and the cure for that diagnosis. When it comes to your treatment goals for your hearing impairment, they are largely clinician driven and would be to improve your hearing through medical means and or amplification. It is assumed that the clinician knows best and therefore your treatment plan is set and dictated by the clinician only. Communication is largely one way and input from you as the patient is largely irrelevant. In this type of model, the clinician holds the power, dictates only the information that they feel that you need, and you are not encouraged to actively engage in your own care. If you go back to that very first doctor's office experience that I was talking about, where they didn't spend a whole lot of time with you and they only ask you a few short questions, you can see that they were using this biomedical approach to care delivery. It really did not matter what your personal preferences, needs, or values were, because that doctor was going to make a treatment recommendation based off of your symptoms and your diagnosis only. When it comes specifically to hearing treatment, hearing care providers who follow the biomedical model really need to know nothing about you other than the fact that you have a measurable hearing loss that could potentially be helped by medical intervention or with amplification. Now let's take a look at the person-centered care approach to hearing care. There are six core elements of person-centered care, and the first element is empathy. 
Empathy is the clinician's ability to sense your emotions along with the ability to imagine what you might be thinking or feeling. Effectively, this means attempting to understand your perspective instead of simply imparting their own perspective. Second is active listening. Active listening is more than the clinician simply nodding their head and saying, uh-huh, to the things that you are saying. This is a way of listening and responding to you in a way that improves mutual understanding. Third is asking open-ended reflective questions. This means more than just asking you yes or no questions because elaboration on your answers can help the clinician understand your perspective on a deeper level. Fourth is shared decision making. This is when you inevitably reach a point where you are at a decision crossroad and your clinician affords you the opportunity to review all of your options allowing you to actively participate in making the decision that is best for you. Fifth is the involvement of family and friends. Communication is not a one-way street. Hearing loss not only affects you, but anyone you communicate with. This is what the World Health Organization calls a third-party disability. The support and involvement of family and friends are critical to the success of your hearing treatment outcomes. Sixth is understanding your individual needs and preferences. This is about finding out what matters to you and exploring your beliefs, ideas, concerns, expectations, effects on your life and your feelings in addition to a traditional biomedical case history. Now think back to a doctor's visit more like the second example that I gave you. I would bet you that when you think about this positive experience, you can see how they were following more of a person-centered care approach. Now when it comes to hearing care, you can often identify which approach your hearing care provider is taking, and you can usually do this fairly quickly. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hold on Cliff, it is obvious that you believe that person-centered care is the best approach to treat someone with hearing loss, but I know myself, and I believe that the biomedical model is what's best for me. If that's you, then I say great. At the end of the day, if you know which type of care delivery model you would prefer, then you ultimately have to do what is in your best interest. However, I would imagine that the vast majority of individuals with hearing loss would do significantly better from a treatment outcome perspective if they went to a hearing care provider who follows a person-centered care approach. The good news is, finding a hearing care provider who follows person-centered care is easier than you may think. The Ida Institute has been working hard since 2007 to build a community that embraces person-centered care and empowers people to get the hearing care that they need and deserve. Hearing care providers who complete the prerequisite courses on person-centered care can earn their Inspired by Ida badge, which shows their knowledge of and commitment to this care delivery model. So if you find a provider with a badge like this one and they follow best practices, then you will be in good hands. If you would like to learn more about person-centered care or you would just like more information about dealing with hearing loss, then I highly recommend you check out the Ida Institute website at idainstitute.com. At the end of the day, if you want the experience of your hearing treatment to be centered around your wants and needs, then the care delivery model adopted by your hearing care professional plays a vital role. This is why the person-centered model of hearing care delivery can take your hearing treatment from good to great. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.